Hello, welcome to this video produced as part of the Further Math Support Programme's material for A-level maths and further maths. This one continues the discussion of centre of mass and focuses on composite bodies. Well, what do I mean by composite body? Something like this. There's a letter F cut out of uniform card and we're asked to find the centre of mass of the shape. Now what we'll do is deal with it by cutting it into bits. So we will imagine that there's a, a rectangle cut off at the top there and what looks like being a square cut off there. So we take it as three bodies stuck together. Now what are the principles we're using here? A composite body may be formed by adding uniform objects, we've had three of them, or removing sections or cutting holes as we shall, as we shall see later. Now when we do that we use a constant for the mass per unit area in this case and in three dimensions a mass per unit volume. And that procedure is particularly important if we're composing a body from elements of different densities. So back to the F. I've put a coordinate system on using the origin in the bottom left hand corner and X and Y in the obvious way and I've taken that constant K as the mass per unit area. So I'll draw a table and then we're going to replace each of the bits, each of the uniform lamina by a corresponding particle at the centre of mass. So in the case of part A, looking at the dimensions, it's 3 by 2, so its mass will be 6k. And the coordinates of that centre of mass, marked by a dot near the A, will be at 3.5 and at 8. I will do the same for B and for C. Once we've done that we'll work out the mass the MX product so this will be 21k that's 6k times 3.5k and 6 eighths of 48k. So we can do that procedure for each of the three bits and then we'll use the table in the usual way. So there are the figures. Just verify quickly say for C. C is 2 by 9 so hence 18k. Its centre of mass is halfway across so it will have x coordinate 1 and it's halfway up which so it will have y coordinate 4.5. And then as usual 18k times 1 is 18k and 18k times 4.5 4 18s are 72 and another 9 is 81k. So then we do the totals in the usual way, getting bigger, bigger numbers this time. 145k for that sum and 51 for this and a 28 easily enough for the masses. So we're now talking about a composite body with a mass of 28k. So we do the usual thing, we divide the 51 by the 28 k to get the x bar and fairly typically in this kind of calculation the k's cancel out. That applies if you're using a uniform material for all the parts. It wouldn't apply otherwise. There's the y value calculated in the same way and we round that to give an answer to the question in context with the two decimal places accuracy. So that's pretty standard for the procedure gets more interesting in three dimensions as we shall see. But let's look at a more complicated two-dimensional one first. This time we've removed a triangle and a circle from a rectangular lamina. Now there are various pieces of information like the center of mass coordinates and the, we can work out the center of mass coordinate for the whole black shape before anything was removed because it's just a rectangle. So we'll take our usual decision about axes, there's the x-axis, there's the origin, and there's the y-axis. Now on that basis then, we can get the area of the lamina, that will be 45 times 30, which is 1350. And the other thing we'll need, of course, is the mass per unit area, so that we can put in a k on that to get a mass from an area. Well, the x value is given 
uh, well, it'll be the, the obvious values from the coordinates, from the dimensions, 22.5 for a half of 45 and 15 for y. And then we'll need to do the usual multiplication of 1350k times 22.5 to find the mixi term, and similarly for miyi. Now for the triangle, we'll have areas of 100, so that's just 100k. Now the triangle, we're told, has a centre of mass at 10 and 11, so we can fill those in. So again, this entry will be 100k times 10. That one's trivial, so I'll put it in. And similarly, we'll have for the area of the circle, which is 78.5, we'll have 78.5k. And its, its centre of mass is given as 35 15. So we have all those calculations to fill in in the usual way. There we are, that's done. Now notice what happens this time. Actually there's an included minus sign there. Now that's quite important. I simply did the calculation of the area on the previous page, but the minus sign arises because these two shapes, in this case the, the triangle, are removed. So this white area counts as negative mass. Similarly, for the circle, that counts as negative as well. So when the mixi is worked out, whereas I put it as 1000k, it's now minus 1000k to account for the fact that it's been removed. On the basis of the previous page, strictly speaking, my calculations showed it as though it had been added in, if the triangle and the circle had been stuck onto the lamina as extras. But in fact, as the question says, they're removed, and that's why you have the, all these minus signs. So when you do the addition, we end up with a slightly different result than we might first have naively have expected, uh, but it's still the same principle. So there we have the x-bar value and the y-bar value worked out and stated in a summary of the answer. Now that seems a reasonable answer because moving roughly the same sort of size of area from a rectangle, roughly equal sides of the centre of mass, shouldn't make too much difference to where the centre of mass is. And 22.7 isn't 22 .7 is pretty much halfway across and 15 and a bit is pretty much halfway up. So that's as we'd expect. OK, now what can we do in three dimensions? Now for this to be interesting, we need to anticipate what comes a little later. Here are two things to be taken on trust. If you have a hemisphere which is made of uniform material, a solid hemisphere that is, then the centre of mass will be three-eighths of the way up its axis of symmetry. Not obvious why that is, that needs a separate de derivation, but we're taking it on trust for the moment. And similarly, if you have a, a solid cone, the centre of mass for that is a quarter of the way, a solid uniform cone, I should say, strictly, the centre of mass for that is a quarter of the way up the height. There's no, shall we say, intuitively obvious way of remembering those two results, so either you need to look them up or be given them, but um, they can be quoted in appropriate contexts. The other things we'll need to remind ourselves, uh, we probably really know these off by heart, is that for a sphere, using obvious notation, that's the expression we've grown used to using for volume, and similarly for a cone. R is the radius of the base and H, H is the height. So, let's now look at this child's toy, a cone stuck to a hemisphere. They're using the same material, it's even more interesting if it, they're different materials, but in this case they're both the same. And we're trying to find the centre of mass of the toy. So what we'll do is formulate it as usual. We've taken axes, we call it a y-axis. I've put an arrow to show that positive is upwards, because the coordinate of the centre of mass for the cone, if the origin is where I've put it, will turn out to be negative, because it's below O. So, for this, those are the usual results we assume, and there's the table that we expect. Now, I'm going to fill in just this one item for this, but the principle will be clear for the rest. The hemisphere, you're going to have a half times two-thirds, times four-thirds, 
nearly bit, did the half twice, four thirds pi times the radius cubed. That's the volume. Now that will have to be multiplied by whatever constant we used for the volume per unit, uh, sorry, the mass per unit volume, the density. Uh, and th that will be uh, then that will be the, uh, the the mass element for the hemisphere and you, that will be what goes into that box and then the x coordinate the y we, we haven't got an x coordinate because it's the center of mass is trivially trivial, trivially on the red axis that's dotted there the y coordinate will be this 3 eighths of the way this is, is this result here 3 eighths of the way up there which means to say that that distance is 9 over 8. So we'll have a 9 over 8 in there. Now the cones volume will be worked out in a similar way using the different formula. Let me just look at the quarter h which will be a quarter of 6 so that will be minus 3 over 2, minus 1 and a half. And that represents the fact that it's a quarter of the way downwards rather than upwards. So the masses in this case will all be positive because nothing's been removed but one of the coordinates is negative. So when we carry through the calculations we'll expect those signs to appear appropriately. Well where, there we are. We've got the 18 pi k times the 9 over 8 and we've got the 18 pi k they have the same volume it turns out and hence the same mass and that's times the negative coordinate. So again the totals are formed and that allows us to work out the y-bar by doing that calculation. Now, we've got a negative answer. Is that surprising? Well, I said that the you observe from these entries that the cone and the hemisphere have the same volume, but it's quite clear that in the case of the cone, much more of it is spread f further away from the origin than is the case with the hemisphere, and hence we expect the center of mass of the combination to be dragged towards that of the cone, so we end up with a negative answer. So negative 3 6 sixteenths, and in context there we are, 3 sixteenths of a centimetre, since those were the units below O. OK, now what have we, let's just summarise where we've got to. We treat each part of the composite body as a particle at, the, at its centre of mass. Its mass comes from its volume, and we use its density. And the two calculation that was would be for a three-dimensional one, but we've, we've covered in principle the two-dimensional, where we have area times mass per unit area, and three-dimensional, where it's volume times mass per unit volume. And we can make up cons composite shapes by parts added together or removed. Remembering to use negative mass if it's removal. And in three dimensions, the centre of mass, we can frequently simplify things by taking the centre of mass on the rotational symmetry line. Well, that brings us to the end of that presentation. And the next thing we move to is the use of integration to apply it successively to laminars and solids of revolution.